Hi everybody, Dave Hunt here, owner of Game Masters Guild, welcoming you back to the Mystic Arts. And today I'm going to be painting a plant creature with Games Workshop's Contrast Paints. Now, before I get started, I just want to thank my good friend Summer for printing out these plant creatures on her resin printer. And it's not just these two, I've got a bunch of other ones that she got me and just totally gave me, which is super awesome and she's really great. She's also a subscriber and again, I just want to do a quick shout out to her and say thank you very much. For applying these contrast paints, I'm going to use, want to use a pretty big brush and uh, I'm going to be using a lot of paint, so I'm going to get a lot of paint on the brush and I'm really just going to kind of slop it on the figure here in a second. Now exactly what is a contrast paint? Well, there's another type of paint called a shade or a wash. And for Games Workshop, it's called a non oil or agrass earth shade. They have several different colors. And if you've ever made one of these before, they're super watery and uh, they run everywhere. And they're real thin and it's designed kind of to shade or darken with the certain color that it is to give that little extra dimension to your miniature. Contrast paints are a little thicker than the regular washes or shades. However, they're not as thick as standard paints. They're still pretty runny and they're designed, once you put them on, they're designed to flow into the lower areas of the miniature and where they pool, they'll darken and then they'll leave lighter at the higher areas, lighter, and those are automatically highlighted. And that's the benefit of these contrast paints is to allow you to paint a mini pretty quickly and with a very minimal amount of time and effort, can you get a miniature painted, shaded, and ready to go. These contrast paints do typically cost more than the standard Games Workshop paints. Usually a Games Workshop um, paint bottle will probably cost you about four and a half bucks, whereas contrast paints will cost you around $7.75, right around there. Of course, you are getting more paint, and you will have a tendency to use more of it. And as you can see here, I end up dripping a lot of paint on my work area. But the nice thing about it is I'm working on a non-porous surface, so I can always dip my brush down in there and retrieve some of that paint and go ahead and reapply it to my miniature. Contrast paints are really good if you want to mass produce miniatures. Let's say you have a bunch of city guard that are all the same, or space marines with the same general color scheme, or in this case I got a bunch of plant creatures. Matter of fact, in the background you can see that there's a bunch of monstrous plant vines I have, which I'll be getting those after a little while. Now probably going to ask, well, couldn't you just go ahead and use any paint and just paint it on really fast like I'm doing right here in this video? Or couldn't I just use some spray primer and pick a certain color and just go with it? Like if, like for instance with this plant creature, wouldn't I be better off just spray priming them all green? Well, I could, but the only thing is it's just going to be that one color. There's not going to be a whole lot of extra uh, definition. It's just going to be that one flat color. Whereas with contrast paints, when you put them on, depending on how thick the paint is when it dries, then you're going to get these different depths of color that will look more natural and really a lot more appealing to the eye than just a flat primer on it. Now, I have done it before where I have primed a model ahead of time with a certain color. Like I could have very easily primed this guy in a green, but I didn't feel like I had anything light enough that I wanted to prime them with that wouldn't make it harder to add on paint later. Essentially what I'm getting at is if you use a dark primer, it's harder to get those light colors on top to show. So I like to paint everything, I'm sorry, I like to prime everything with a very neutral color or a lighter color, like a white or a gray. I really prefer Games Workshop's um, Gray Sear primer. And I really like that because it goes on nice and easy and I just like that nice neutral gray, doesn't matter if I'm painting darks or lights. But anyways, let's uh, let's catch up here to where I'm at and uh, see what we got going on. <clears throat> For the first coat of paint, I decided to use Plague Bear's Flesh. 
It's a nice kind of a sickly green color. It's very light and I thought it'd be a good thing to start with. Now, I did leave the model for a little while to dry, probably about 20 or 30 minutes at least before I started on this next coat, which you can see is darker. And I chose this one, which is called Gulliman Flesh, to kind of simulate the wood and the branches that this plant thing, um, I could even you call it a shambling mound, honestly, but uh, it could be anything. But I'm using that Gulliman Flesh to just kind of lightly drop some of that contrast paint on there just to give it that woodsy look. Make it look like I actually got logs and branches and sticks all up in there. And I think it's a nice complement to the Plague Bear flesh. Now this miniature that was supplied to me is not in any 5th edition monster manual. Nor have I seen it in any of the more popular third party stuff like Tome of Beasts for instance. Now this is completely someone else's own homebrew design that they put out there and again my friend Summer printed this out with a resin printer and uh, got me a bunch of these really cool models. And what I like about these unique kind of creatures is when I go to play I like to throw these different miniatures out there in the middle of the battlefield and it can really throw players for a loop when they see something they don't expect to see. Now they might assume that they're going to be fighting a shambling mound, but when I put it out there on the battlefield, they're going to look at it and go, well, that doesn't look like the shambling mound miniature that uh, you sell there at your shop, Dave. What is this? And I just shrug my shoulders and say, well, you don't know. Give me a check and we'll find out. Fear of the unknown is really good in games. And it's really good if you can instill that in the minds of the players. And sometimes you do that by how you describe the scene, you lay out the clues, how you deepen the mystery. And sometimes it's done by just putting out a miniature that the players have never seen before. Now, of course, with this model, they can draw some conclusions. Eh, it's probably Shambling Mound-esque. But because I put that out there instead of a shambling mound, the players, well, they're not going to be so sure. And they might be a little more cautious. And what's nice is since the players don't know what this thing does, well, I can do whatever I want. I can overlay all sorts of different stats on it. Now, it might be kind of weird if I overlaid, say, vampire statistics over this creature. But then again, if I did, I would probably use very specific statistics and leave the other ones off to the side, not even paying attention to them. Of course, I'd want to make a note for the future so if they ever encounter this thing, then I'd know what they'd be up against, and that way I'd stay consistent. And you always want to stay consistent. Okay, now this guy is pretty much done if I wanted him to be. That base coat of Plague Bear Flesh looks really nice on him. Got him that sickly green color. And I followed that up with some of that Gulliman Flesh to really make the sticks and branches stand out and also give me some darker areas where they go inside his body. But I don't think I want to stop right there. I think I'm going to add me a different color just to see what I can do. So I'm going to go through my contrast paints, find something appropriate, and I think it's going to be Warp Lightning. That's what I'm going to use. It's going to be a darker green, and I'm a little worried just because it's a lot darker than the rest of him. But we're going to see how it looks. I just think I want to add some extra green in some little spots just to, just to see what happens. And it's only paint, so it's not a big deal. So let's give it a shot. I'll dip some here on my brush, and let's see. I'm just going to start hitting them and we'll see what happens. Like most of the miniatures I paint, I usually don't have a real major plan when I go to paint them. I just kind of start painting and see where it takes me. I, I find it fun and enjoyable to do that. Uh, that's just me though. Uh, sometimes I'll, I might look online for reference photos, but or flip through, even through the monster manual, but you know, a lot of times I just start painting whatever feels right to me, especially when it comes to monsters. 
because they can be any color. And you know what? It's miniature painting anyways. It's not a crisis. I just like the fact that it's painted. And so I'm going to sit here and I'm going to spread this contrast paint around and I'm going to do my best to uh, avoid straight lines. Inevitably, you know, sometimes you just can't, just can't avoid it. And uh, I'm going to try to, wherever it pools up, I'm going to try and spread it out a little bit because I don't want it to be too dark and really kind of break his appearance. But I definitely think so far by adding it, especially when I've added it kind of lightly in some spots, it looks pretty good. Oh, I do like this... Uh, thick green stripe up his back. I don't know why, it's just kind of cool. I think I'm digging that. Yep. So uh, as you can see, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to make it nice and thin. Plus, if I make this contrast paint even thinner, some of that lighter Plague Bear flesh will show through. Some of that Gulaman flesh, that brown, will kind of show through a little bit. They'll kind of accentuate each other. So I'm really trying my best with the Warp Lightning not to completely cover and obscure the other paints although you can see in some spots like right there on his right arm or down on his lower body i've really kind of put it on kind of thick uh, i'm not going to worry too much about it but it's definitely something that uh, i just have to be a little cautious of let's see here Get around this little eyeball there i don't think i'm going to mess with his eyeball at all i like that plague bearer flesh coming right out of that heavily wooded area that kind of looks like I mean it looks like an eyeball maybe it's a small mouth before it opens wide because the wood around that eye thing or mouth thing kind of looks like it could be teeth um, I don't know let's see here let's just kind of keep doing some more painting I, I really do like the green uh, a lot of times I will tap off my brush just to get some of that green off of there and now I can go back and kind of use the paint that's already on the model kind of thin it out some more there we go there we go All right uh, and uh, whenever you're painting don't stress too much because there's a lot of things that I was thinking while I was painting this miniature and uh, as always whenever I'm doing any of these things especially for you guys I'm always a little worried about the outcome but you know I, I just can't worry about it because really you know all the painting that I've ever done just comes from my own personal experience. I didn't go to school for it. No one showed me how to do it. I've watched some videos, but you know, I just follow my own instincts and I do quite honestly, whatever makes me happy. And um, quite frankly, no matter how this guy turns out, I'm gonna be super happy that I did it. Nobody else. Nobody kind of half painted them for me or anything like that. I just kind of did what I wanted and I'm going to be happy with the result and super proud of it. Real quick, I'm going to take a wet paper towel and just kind of dab off some of the paint where it's thick and smear off some uh, straight lines that I might have and make things look a little more natural instead of uh, unnatural. All right, I just kind of had a brainstorm. So I'm going to do something different with this guy. I'm going to experiment right now. So we're going to put them on this paper towel in order to catch any of the basing grass that I'm going to apply directly to the miniature. And of course I'm going to use Elmer's glue or any basing glue will work. Now, basing material doesn't necessarily have to be on the base of your miniature. You can apply it directly to the miniature if you so choose. And uh, I think this might make my miniature pop just a little bit more than just having them painted those with those three colors. So let's put some glue right here on this uh, extra upside down base I've got. And let's get started. I'm literally just going to dip some of the twigs right into the glue. And actually, let's see here. I think it might make it a little easier if I used a tool. Now you don't need a fancy plastic spatula like this. You could use the end of a paintbrush, you can use an old paintbrush and apply it with the bristles, or you could even use your fingers, or you could dip it right in just like I did earlier. But uh, having this extra little spatula seems to work pretty good, and I'm just literally gonna dunk them right into the grass. Yep, 
that's what I love about this basing stuff. It's so easy to work with. And then now from here on out, just wherever I feel like I want to put the, the grass, I'm just going to put some glue on it. It's wherever I want. I just got to remember not to take too long because I don't want that glue to uh, dry too quickly. But I shouldn't have any trouble with that. And then now holding them over the paper towel, I'm going to sprinkle some of that grass all over the, the basing glue. And the paper towel is there to catch all of the extra basing grass that I have. So whatever misses the model and doesn't stick, I can shake it back into the container so I can keep using it later. Will I get it all back in there? Ah, probably not. But at least I'm going to save the majority of it. At least the majority of the stuff that falls away. And here I'm just going to apply some more glue, just wherever I feel like it, wherever I think it might look cool. Uh, I want to be careful that, of course, I don't put too much basing material on him because I don't want to completely cover my paint job. But I want, I want my basing material to augment the colors that are there, and likewise I want the colors to augment the basing material. So I want them both to kind of play off each other really nice. And this is just a quick experiment. Um, I just think it's kind of appropriate. I think even if it comes out bad, it'll still look good because it's a plant creature. Uh, some other creatures might not come out so well if you're not careful. Uh, and here I'm going to tap off uh, the miniature with my little spatula there. And I'm doing that to shake off all the extra material. And apparently I just need more on this guy. Let's see here. There we go, gonna sprinkle a little more right here. A little more, there we go. Tap it down a little bit there with my finger. Nothing wrong with that. And I think, really, I don't think I've put too much on him. I think he's gonna come out all right. Yeah, okay. Yep, all right, now let's, uh, Let's uh, kind of move everything over here. Let's uh, kind of clean up this area real quick. That way we can get a nice good look at our plant thing. All right. Look at that. Woo! Hey, I actually kind of like him. I like how he came out. Yeah, I think, uh, I think that works out very well. Yeah, at first I was a little worried about how much, about all that dark green that I had and that maybe I had too much on there. But I think it all works pretty well. I could probably have painted it better and really planned it better coordinating it with the material that I was putting on the plant thing but oh man I just think he looks really cool oh man I like that now he is all ready to terrorize my players okay and that's about all for today looks like we're done I'd like to thank you for stopping by and learning more about the mystic arts from me and if you like what you see today, be sure to hit that like button, be sure to subscribe, and most of all, be sure to share this with your friends. Again, I'm David Hunt, owner of Game Masters Guild, telling you to stay safe, play great games, and I'll see you real soon.